Avengers! Assemble. Back to the channel it's the pre avengers you guys and welcome back to another marvel future fight video and today we're back with the patch notes video guys just like as i promised um in the last video here's the patch notes video like i said i apologize for it being late um it came out about 12 hours ago but like i said uh it comes out very late at night so i can't make a video about it first but either way we're here with the patch notes and we got uh, a lot to talk about not only the patch notes but the also the uh check-in for the eighth year anniversary uh, countdown um, for Marvel Future Fights. So let's get straight on into everything. There's a lot to talk about. Uh, some controversies going on right now, too. I'm sure you guys have heard lots of complaining, lots of happiness. We're going to go over all of it, but I will tell you guys that in this video, I'm going to try and stay neutral as much as possible uh, because right now it is a lot of people either A, complaining, or B, being really happy with the update and the check-in. Um, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to really pick a side. Um, I'm gonna be neutral. I'm gonna. Uh, I understand both sides of being upset and liking it. Um, so I'm gonna try and stay as neutral as possible. But there might be some topics that I may agree with one side more than the other. Uh, I'm not gonna get into it too much. I don't really like uh, to pick sides with stuff like this. But I do think it is interesting to talk about at the very least. So let's get straight into this. Greetings, agents. CM Fragment. Thanos getting a tier four. Squirrel Girl getting a tier three. We knew that, of course, from the two sneak peeks. We got two new uniforms. And here we go straight in with Thanos'. So the most important thing about Thanos' uniform right off the bat, I'll tell you, is that it does cost 2,500 crystals. So if you don't know, the update will be dropping tonight. Um, actually, about eight hours from when this video drops, the uh, update should be out. It is a mid-month update, so it'll just uh, automatically download as you log into the game. No need to go into the App Store or anything like that to download. But anyways, Thanos' uniform, yes, it will cost 2,500 crystals, being one of the most expensive uniforms, obviously. And here is why. If you didn't know... With uh, the sort of scene uniforms, um, for example, the Halloween uh, update, we got Black Bolt as a uniform. And even though the other uniforms were on sale, his was not because it's a seasonal uniform. So it costs 1,750 crystals. But with Thanos uh, here, um, if you remember, all his other uniforms do cost 2,500. And then once you get the sale, it's about 1,500. But because this is, is a seasonal uniform... And it is a native, native, sorry, tier two character uniform. It is going to cost 2,500 crystals, making it one of the most expensive uniforms out there. Uh, so you got to keep that in mind. But the other thing you got to keep in mind is that if you do not pick this uniform up, you cannot buy it until next year, which by then it might not be as great. Um, I mean, look, the thing about this, and it is a good point that was brought up by uh, at Daily Moff, which fight that I have a conversation with him. Uh, so shout out to him. Uh, this uh, is definitely credited to him. But a good point that he brought up was that, look, if you do skip on the uniform, it is OK. Um, you know, if you think other uniforms from the anniversary sale um, will benefit you more than this uniform, then, then it's OK, because no character is a must have. If you don't have Gene, you can still survive. You can still kill people with Thanos with reflect characters like Ancient One, like Destroyer, who are all free to play or even Silver Surfer. Um, and then, for example, even if you don't have her in GBR, there are other characters like Iron Man, like Black Bolt. And if you didn't get Black Bolt, Iron Man's a perfect example of another character you can do GBR with. There are other options always in this game. There's never just one solid option. You must get this character. No, it's completely up to you. I think that's one of the beautiful things about this game. And thank you again to uh, at Dilly Marvel Future Fight um, for bringing up this uh, topic and this point. I uh, really agree. So anyways, let's get straight back into the patch notes. Um, I rambled a little bit there. So he is a universal and he is staying a supervillain, uh, which is all great. His uniform in effect uh, recovers 70% HP. Additional pierce damage, which is uh, good to know. It's something that I kind of forgot about, but he uh, does have additional 5% pierce damage. Uh, the first time looking through this, I kind of skipped over it. But yes, he does have that uh, along with other characters like uh, Athena and whatnot. So that is Pretty important, especially for those of you that don't have 22 or 25% pierce. And then we get into some of the other stuff. 
He's got invincibility on his uh, tier three here. He's got stun, fear, um, ignore dodge rate. Uh, a lot of great stuff here. Increased basic damage. That's that proc. And then his leadership is increase all basic attack by 50%. Uh, basic defense uh, is 40% and attack is 50%. I'm not sure if this changed. I do think it was increased a little bit um, from the original one. I don't remember it being that high, but I would have to double check that. Then his passive applies to himself. Uh, increased basic damage out to superheroes and supervillains, 30 and 20%. Um, his 2 passive kind of stays pretty much the same. His first skill here, he got a little bit of bleed and uh, some energy and physical um, attack, uh, energy damage, I should say. But he does have some physical attack as well. He has snare on the second skin skill um obviously those skills don't matter as much it's not until we get to the three four and five here that matters the most and so on the three he does have uh fear 14 second cooldown not bad 100 percent chance to grant all damage immunity on that increased basic damage as well then we get into the fourth skill he has bleed shock stun fracture paralysis all this great stuff um and he has um 80 chance to penetrate with super armor that's uh pretty important for pve as well and pvp um, and then he has some uh, invincible as well on that skill. And then again, in a 13 second cooldown, not too bad. Um, and then his fifth skill, which I like the name of Scarecrow of Enlightenment, um, has some burn, uh, some silence, some decrease to all basic defense. He has accumulation, which is important for PVE that uh, is really going to help him out on his damage. Um, and he has some excluding uh, bosses, ignore enemy damage decreased. Um, and a cooldown of 15 seconds, not bad. But yeah, the big thing everyone's been talking about is that accumulation. That's really going to help him out in PvE. It's going to make him a beast, especially at level 80. Um, so we'll have to see how well it does in PvP as well. But accumulation definitely shows that it's leaning a little bit to PvE. But who knows? We'll have to see. Obviously, the patch knows. It's just what's on paper. What really matters is how it performs in-game. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole Thanos uniform. Then we get into um, Squirrel Girl. Um, she is a paywall character. They normally do this. The female characters are normally the paywalls. Um, and as you can see there, she is, she stays at speed. She turns into a super villain, which is interesting. And she does have 30 tokens. She has a uniform effect for Thanos specifically. It says apply to Thanos, increase basic damage dealt to bosses types by 60%, which is really interesting. Shows how they're kind of leaning a lot to PVE, uh, cause that's going to help him against the world boss legends and the G uh, and the GBR characters like Master Mold, Galactus, and obviously the most important Dormammu. Um, so yeah, that is pretty interesting. Um, the rest of her kit is not too impressive. Um, she has some uh, thirty percent increase of physical attack on her passive. Um, she has burn, physical damage, stun, bleed, paralysis, uh, uh, more paralysis. She has a heal on the third skill, which by the way I did forget to mention with Thanos here. Um, I don't believe he has a heal on of these skills. He does recover. Yeah, he recovers 20% of his HP every one second at, from his passive. I did forget to mention that. Uh, so you don't have to worry about popping a heal skill. Um, he does stay the same as far as just healing automatically. Um, but she does have a heal on that third skill. It's only 20%. Not the best, uh, but uh, it's better than nothing, I guess. Um, but to today's standards, it is kind of sucky. Uh, today's standards is more 25, 30%. Uh, is really the range that you want your characters to have a heal, but it is what it is. And then she has some physical damage, some bleed, fear. Uh, she does have accumulation as well, so maybe she's good for PvE. I'm not sure uh, because she's only level 70 tier 3, uh, so it's, it's going to be hard, guys. With level 80s, yeah, it's going to be really hard. And speed supervillain, um, with the introduction of Green Goblin, she's not going to take over ABX and AVL. Uh, meaning that her best uh, usage is probably going to be that support for Thanos uh, with the increased basic damage dealt to boss types by 60%. Which is kind of sad, uh, but hopefully she uh, can do more. We'll have to wait and see. Then her tier 3 ability here, uh, she's got some in invincible on it. Uh, in some invincibility, sorry, some increased basic damage. And this is exactly what it looks like. Um, it's pretty funny. It's pretty uh, creative with the, with the nuts. Definitely fits her character. Then Thanos' tier 4 skill, which is um, interesting, uh, kind of similar to other ones we've seen before, but a little different at the same time. Decreases all basic attacks by uh, minus 50%. That's uh, sort of new, I, I believe. I don't remember any other tier 4s. I'll, I'll look back on this uh, once we actually do the review for him, but um, I do believe that is new. Um, and he has some increased basic damage, increased chain hit damage, and energy damage. We've seen those before. And then uh, Squirrel Girl gets a new artifact. 
Uh, Thanos does not because he already has an artifact and her uh, artifacts just ignore dodge rate um, uh, up to the instinct and increase basic damage dealt to boss types. Uh, pretty common artifact uh, that we've seen as well. And then uh, this is the part where I was personally a little disappointed. I was hoping for some sort of quality of life changes like the autoplay for a uh, world, uh, world event um, to give me another sort of video and content to make you guys. But unfortunately, that's basically it. Um, there's some game uh, errors fixed, something with Green Goblins Tier 3. Um, and that's it. And yeah, uh, this right here shows you kind of how the community's feeling about it. Um, look, guys, um, NFF is going on its eighth year. You guys can't keep expecting more and more. I feel like we're expecting more and more. But then at the same time, I can see those who want a little bit more. Like I said, I... I wouldn't have mind some quality of life changes, but um, who knows? Maybe they're all saving it for the anniversary. I think we got to still to stay positive overall, guys. Um, a brand new uniform, um, a brand new tier four, two brand new uniforms, sorry, a brand new tier four. It's exciting, guys. We got new content, new uh, characters to try out, um, and uh, this also helps uh, the whales um, climb higher in World Boss Legend. And it helps new players as well um, get at their hands on another character who may be able to counter Gene. I mean, to be honest, Thanos might, he's going to be less expensive than Gene overall because you have to pay that 6,600 crystals for Gene. So if he counters Gene, that'll help new players if you think about it. You know, I, like I said, I'm trying to play both sides, um, but I'm not going to get into it too much. But that's pretty much the patch notes, guys. Um, but I did want to also talk about the um a party countdown event for the eighth year anniversary yes it is coming guys um i do believe it is the 30th of april is the actual day that marvel future fight came out um i actually searched that up here real quick uh i don't have it memorized no um while i continue to talk but they did release a check-in event that will start right as the patch comes out um so make sure to log in before the reset i i do believe you can get the reward and i'm gonna go through all of this stuff that we got here uh the pros the cons um and what you need to know and uh obviously more people are liking this than hating it but there still is a, a little bit of anger there i think that's just getting transferred over from um the patch notes um but yeah guys like i said you gotta stay positive um and give me one sec to search this stuff sorry we had to do a jump real quick i had to double check so yes it is april 30th that marvel future fight does come out um and apologies if you hear any background noise but uh it did come out uh april 30th um so that means uh we're starting a check-in event now that's gonna last up until where did it go here it is um up until the 26th and then we'll probably that will probably be the week that we get the uh uniform sale um the week of the anniversary um for 50 percent off all the uniforms but let's get straight into this check-in so we got some pros and cons but first of all let's just look through we got a um six star um selector for mutant and uh regular which we actually did get today already um i did just uh grab mine today so make sure to log in before the reset um so these will basically refresh at every reset um and the way that this works is different from the actual check-in in Marvel future fight so if you know the check-in to get ctp chest if you miss a day you're screwed you're not getting that ctp chest with this it works a little differently if you don't get if you don't log in and get it it's gone First of all, sorry, but you can still get the rewards later on. So let's say I missed this black antimatter. Normally in the check-in, the regular check-ins um, for the CTP, let's say this is the tier two mega tickets to CTP. I have to go back and pay crystals to get this so I can still get this one. In this check-in event, um, and then the reason why I'm going over this is because um, this is only once a year and some of you guys may not remember this from last year. But in this check-in event, if I miss this Black Antimatter, I can still get the Tier 2 Mega Ticket as long as I log in that day. Um, so if you really don't have the time to log in every day, which you should be if you're watching this video, uh, you're, you're out here watching Marvel by YouTube, you should be logging in every day. Um, but let's say you're busy or whatever, you can skip some days um, and just make sure you log in on the days for the rewards that you actually need or actually want. Um, but let's go straight through this. Uh, we got Black Antimatter, Norn Stones, Biometrics, uh, 300, which is nice. 2 million gold, uh, X Gene Selector, all very nice. And we got a Tier 2 Mega Ticket, which is nice. I'm definitely be using that on Polaris. And they got Maracanin Shards, Phoenix Feathers, some Celestial Essence, and Mandela Gems. Love that. A 4-star Artifact Chest. Uh, I hope I can get um, Jean Grey out of that, or even Thanos now would be awesome. Uh, Awakening Crystals, 300 Crystals, which is beautiful. And Odin's Blessing Chest, as always. Um, and then some Tier 3 Mats. And then we got a regular 6-star 
um, uh, tier two selector, um, which is cool. And then a level six uh, advanced potential uh, enhanced ticket, which is awesome as always. And then we got 600 crystals, which is really cool. Um, and then the tier three uh, selector at the end. So let's get into the pros and cons. First of all, if you haven't looked at the patch notes since they first dropped, there was a glitch on day one. It showed 900 crystals and on the actual uh, date, uh, the 25th, they didn't have the tier three selector there. They uh, fixed it. Uh, it was some sort of bug or something when it first came out. So if you haven't looked at it since then, it did get updated and fixed. Uh, this was reduced by 300 crystals and they did add back in the tier three. Not sure what happened there, but either way, let's get straight into this so first of all anything up to here is nice for returning players but the main thing people are going to be talking about is the odin's blessing chest the mega tier ticket this uh advanced potential enhancement the crystals obviously and the tier three so let's get break those down first of all normally there are two mega tier two tickets which kind of sucks that we're only getting one this time i'm not gonna lie to you guys because i plan to use both of those one on polaris and one on ghost panther now that's not going to happen but we still have the chance at getting a selector, a tier two selector, a premium tier two selector, sorry, um, uh, later on, uh, because obviously there's still like that week of the actual anniversary week. Um, so there is a chance because there is the transcended uh, check in that's just like this at the end to transcend it, except this one's tier three. Um, there is another one of these right after, if you didn't know. Um, so maybe we get it uh, during then, uh, maybe instead of the regular uh, tier two selector to be a premium. That would be nice because otherwise I'm kind of screwed. Uh, like that's screwing over my my anniversary plans because last year we got two of these from the very first one. This year we're only getting one. So yeah, uh, kind of sucks. Not gonna lie to you, um, but it is what it is, I guess. In total, we're getting 900 crystals. Last year we didn't get that many. Um, I can't remember the exact one. I did have conversation with friends about this, but I believe it was about 600. Um, so it has been increased, which is nice um and people are saying that the 600 crystals is making up for that tier two not sure if that uh, necessarily makes up for it but if you do think about it 600 plus 300 is 900 a uniform 50 percent off on the actual date of the anniversary or the week of the anniversary um is enough to buy a uniform so that's a free uniform right there that's so that's cool um and then we got an owns busting chest which is always nice the tier the level six advanced ticket is also nice but then the main topic that people were talking about, um, at least from what I've heard, is the tier three selector. Um, honestly, it doesn't bother me too much as long as this changes in the future. But from what we're looking at, um, they do show you actually in the patch the list of characters that you can acquire from the tier three selector. And it's basically the same as the last tier three selector that we have gotten, guys. The list doesn't change very much. I think there was like one or two that changed um and that was it um so yeah and, and i may be wrong on that it may be none at all actually um but like from the last time we got a tier three selector which was i don't know about six months ago um the the list hasn't changed at all we have captain america spider-man black panther cyclops falcon iron man captain marvel ant-man storm war machine thor winter soldier captain america sharon rogers rogue taskmaster black widow vision black bolt ghost rider shang chi hulk daredevil venom loki and hella so look, this is um, a pretty big list, I'll be honest. But at this point in the game, a lot of people already have all these characters upgraded. Um, there's only a couple on this list that I actually need. I will be personally going with War Machine because I uh, I was one of the characters I don't have at Tier 3. And I could use a support for Iron Man. But I know a lot of my uh, friends and whatnot that I play uh, the game with a lot um, were saying that their options are very limited. There's like two or three and that if this list doesn't change in the future, uh, they're going to end up only getting bios, which really sucks, guys. So I hope they do change it um, because staying the same really sucks. Um, I'll be honest. I, I can't really see a pro to that. It, it just genuinely sucks um, not getting a changed list. Um, it, yeah, it. I don't want to touch base on it too much, but I do want to point it out. Um, hopefully they change it up. I hope they change it in the Transcendent Selector because I'm hoping to get my hands on Hulkbuster and if they just do the same copy and paste kind of thing and they don't change it, well, then, uh, yeah, <laughs> my 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 plans for the anniversary are starting to go down the drain a little bit, guys. I'm, I'm having to adjust here. Um, but hopefully they do change the Transcend Selector. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. Um, but yeah, um, hopefully there's someone on this list that is available to you. Like I said, it's still a pretty big list. So especially for new players, 
there's tons of options um and i will do a video uh as that date gets closer on which characters are going to be the best and which characters to outright skip um but that'll do it for today's video guys that is the patch notes and that is the um party countdown check-in event for the eighth year anniversary let me know your thoughts down below um like i said i tried being neutral sorry if i was too much on one side or the other like i said did my best um but that's it for the video guys um the patch like i said we'll be dropping in seven hours um we'll most likely actually be up to stream it uh tonight so make sure to go check it out on my twitch uh link is in my about section so go check it out um but that'll do it for the video guys thank you so very much for watching and we'll see you guys all later for the updates see ya